Hi, hello, this is Jules the Human here, and welcome to the Jules the Man Anime Hour. I'm one of your hosts, Jules the Human, and every week we go out into the world and watch a little bit of anime, and then we come back here to talk about it. And today we're talking about episode five through eight of Erased. Last week we watched the first four episodes. So if you haven't seen the first four episodes or haven't seen episode five through eight, go back, go check it out, go check out our first episode of Erased, but also go check out all the other anime we've already done, because we've done so many anime, this is just the anime we've done with season two, we're like on episode 800 or something, I don't know, 70 episodes or so of this podcast, we've been doing this, and this is how we shape it out for season two, we have so many more anime to go, there's so much to watch and so much to talk about, but I'm not here alone. I go on this journey with my co-host, Matt Galley, who's just coming back. Matt, how are you? I am so good. I got to see, as uh, Minecraft people would know it, I got to see a new biome. And I uh, no, yeah, I got to have a lot of fun. I got to enjoy a little short vacation, nothing too crazy. But, Where did you go? Uh, well, not specifically, but like... Illinois and Wisconsin. And where are you normally from? California. Oh, and man. I, uh, I've only like been outside of California. And I haven't seen all of California even. I've never really been oh. like San Fran or NorCal, just SoCal. So, uh, yeah, it was just really interesting to you know see new sounds. Uh, see new sounds. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> I um, to, it was uh, actually experience new yes. sounds, <laughs> sights, smells, tastes, and it was a. Uh, it was just a lot of fun. I had a good time. That's nice awesome. Refreshing. Very um, cool. But I'm very excited to uh, continue our first impressions of Erased here because, uh, I mean, well, it's, 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 <laughs> I was, as you had the chart up there a moment ago, I was looking at Trigun Stampede just like, yeah. man, I just need something like a little bit more fun <laughs> and silly because this is man like We've it's been good on a roller coaster and we will talk about it but it's it is uh it is well, emotional and it is full of subject matter <laughs> and i guess yeah i i do want to do like an overview because we watched eight episodes already and hi hello thank you so much for joining us live let us know in the chats wherever you're watching on twitter on twitch on youtube wherever you're watching us live throw a little emote in there and we'll put you up on the screen but um i do kind of want to go over like a little overview before we dive into each episode because i don't know about you and we don't talk about this before but i'm in on the ride and i wanted to ask are you in are you in it because i feel like with these episodes and this show it's giving me that real mystery vibe because i really don't know who it is and i really don't know who it could be and it's not like where it's you know in some shows it's so obvious it's directing you in a certain way and it's like okay this is we're delaying the inevitable i already figured it out five episodes ago what are we doing but then it's also not like not I don't know what's going on. It's not one of those like it's perfect in the middle where I'm on the ride trying to figure it out as the show is going, trying to figure out what's going on, who's the people or person that's behind this. And it's giving me just enough to like want to keep watching. It gives me like a little clue here in each episode. And I'm just like, oh, what does that mean? What's going yeah, on here? So are you on the ride with this with the show? I I think the uh, the story beats and like the pacing of this show is pretty dang good up until one point that I want to talk about in episode oh, six. Oh, okay. In episode six, where as I was watching it, I I kind of felt like up to again up to a certain point, everything was very relayed in a straightforward sense, where it was like you know helping me do that. Oh, this is that, and this connects to that, and like, yeah, it was it was helping me put together my whiteboard of chaos. But then there's one point where it did kind of send me for a loop, and I I I like to think that the show didn't lose me with that part, and that I'm just okay. kind of like overthinking it too much, so to speak. Um, because there are a few things where I am unsure what the context of it is like right now, but I want to hold off to the end to see what things might uh connect to sure uh, i really like full conclusion but at least up to this point yeah i'm here for the ride if not to just get that uh conclusion of like you know the whole i need to see where the whiteboard's leading 
And I'm curious if this is going to be an anime where once we do get the finality of it, uh, the the this is this person, or are we even going to get that at the end of this season? We don't even know that yet for sure. But um, I wonder if this is going to, yeah, I think there's only one season. I think this is going to um, either give us something. I don't know. What do you think it's going to be? Either it's going to give us the ending and then we're going to be like oh if we rewatch it back it's going to be good or do you even think that we're going to have an ending i i think that we're going to have an ending <laughs> i really like to think that with the uh, the way the again yeah with the way the story's been paced out and everything but as this <clears throat> as the story proceeds further i just get very uneasy as to whether or not it's going to be an ending that i want to see <laughs> sure yes but, definitely but- I'm worried. I'm anxious about what the outcome for these characters is because like it just keeps in a lot of ways it keeps going from bad to worse in a sense of uh the 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 main character Satoru even says that himself at one point where he's like there's this guy I had this idea for a story where like somebody keeps trying to help and things just keep getting worse from him trying to help and I I hate to think that that's the foreshadowing that everything that he's done here is just going to lead to some reality in the future where things are so much worse off. Mm -hmm. I I hate uh, to think that, but you said something there about the anxiety. And I I did want to touch on that as well with the feeling and being in this story, because I am feeling the anxiety from this show. I am feeling the tense moments that they want me to feel. I'm feeling the emotions that they want me to feel. So it's doing a really good job of doing that. Uh, at least so far up until episode eight, I'm there and I'm like, I'm biting my nails, bro again. And I'm just like, Oh man, what's hat? Oh, I'm here. Oh my goodness. Um, Thorn Rose says, it reminds me of a little bit of the butterfly effect. I loved the butterfly effect. Such a good movie. The second one was not great, but I really enjoyed uh-huh. it. Yeah. It, that it's was such a good movie. Haha. <laughs> I know we all watched that it. Would be a good movie. No. I know the uh, the idea that the movie presents, but um, I was, born, I, was, Kutcher, I, was, I was born was... in ninety seven, so I, don't, I think that was a little bit <laughs> a little too young for that it, cultural zeitgeist moment. It, it's so random that that movie, it, it, I think, to me, holds the test of time, and I've seen it so many times. I don't know why it was just some random movie, and it was just really good for me. Probably if I watched it right now, it wouldn't be great, but it is like he goes back in time by reading a notebook. He goes back to his past events and he keeps coming back and forth. But every time he changes a little bit of his current life Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, my God, uh, I didn't know that was going to happen. And then he chooses to go back sometimes. It's kind of like that. It's definitely a butterfly effect because of the little butterfly. And, you know, the thing. Um, Let's get into it. Episode five from Erased. Episode five. Get away. What happens in episode five? Satoru finds that Hinazuki has gone missing again, and after witnessing her mom throw out the gloves that she was knitting for him, Satoru finds himself sent back to the present day. Once again, in the hot seat for the murder of his mother, Satoru struggles to find reliable help in the present day. Katagiri helps him hide out, also realizing that his actions have indeed changed things in the present. Katagiri also accidentally blows Satoru's cover, Um, and also shares some of her family's history with him. Finding herself then becoming a target of the murderer, Katagiri gets uh, caught in a house fire. Bro, the way that we get into this episode, um, man, okay, it really threw me off. So there's something, I forgot who said it, and it's kind of a, a, you know, foreshadowing to what you were talking about, how there was there's this underlying thing and anxiety of is he going to actually change it for the better is he going to actually change his timeline for the good and i think it was his mom actually maybe his mom but there was a quote that i have here that seemed important that says there's only so much one person can do um and that's kind of like the reoccurring theme right like Mm -hmm. he's trying to do so much and that even comes up later when he actually has his friends help him out. And that's a big plot point there. Yep. But there's only so much one person can do. Um, a second child disappears, uh, Aya from another school. And then he comes back to the future, bro. I was not expecting us to ever see the future again until I the wasn't end. either. And I mentioned that in uh, our last episode where I was comparing this to Tokyo Revengers in that that show because of the time travel aspect, it can have 
some uh in, it can lead to inconsistencies with a time travel narrative that's mm -hmm. just something that's inherently there but this show manages to i think uh, pull it off in a direction where it's able to keep its like canon well uh structured because it like takes us to a very pivotal point and it's not like a oh every time i go back it's like this set amount of time which is what tokyo mm -hmm. revengers is once um that show once like the things have happened they're done there's no going back again but it's almost like this show by the the narrative by giving him another chance to go back when he was literally uh calling oh i'm sorry i'm, I'm getting ahead of myself that that's a uh, next episode that's episode seven my bad mm -hmm. but he gets sent back to the present and uh it manages to do something that I like with the whole aspect of it's the subtle like uh, things that we've already been presented, like how X day, the whole concept that he was like, we got to stop yeah. X day. So it's, it keeps cl very uh, close to it's those uh, structural beats. And that's what I think is like helping it. Yeah. Keep and that keeps itself structurally sound. Yeah. And that keeps the viewer, you know, staying on focus of what's happening what's actually because time travel stuff and all this can you know somewhat get confusing i think i know what part you're talking about when they're just kind of giving you some exposition in episode six i think it is or somewhere along these four episodes where i was just like okay i gotta think a little bit harder than i have been so it's like okay so i know this stuff can get confusing with the whole going back about what changed what didn't change and they're showing you things without actually explaining some stuff and i'm like okay um but like my mystery mind my head that wants to figure it out is like trying looking for these things and trying to connect the dots exactly um, and that's why like when um again sometimes like uh it can be the show is very good at like show don't tell right mm -hmm. it it satoru getting sent back and it's been all of this rediscovery and trying to um find the you know the right steps to keep hinazuki out of danger but then when later on we get introduced and uh, uh, even as we go back to the present everything is kept very straightforward um in that regard and i feel like the episode five handles that very well but yeah it's definitely in the next episode where it just kind of like a big chunk of the episode is just kind of a lot of uh dialogue expo expository um Mm -hmm. stuff that's just helping the this like you know the help the mystery and the intrigue build as it's revealed like you know it's much bigger than we initially thought type deal yeah um in this so episode I get we why get, it does it but it's just uh it's a yeah. lot yeah in this in this episode we get our first instance of possibly somebody being against satoru or being against all of this being found out because there was some throwaway line as well that the police received a tip about this because you mentioned in last episode like the police showed up really fast and i was like yeah. oh yeah i didn't even think about that part but it does it does say that the police received yeah. a tip that this was happening I seen. yeah <laughs> because i, I didn't like, even yeah. notice that i was just yeah. like okay maybe i don't know they're walking down the street so <laughs> but then um so yeah it it, it definitely draws it just that that one throwaway line draws more credence to the fact that whoever this guy is that's or gal who's doing all this they are <clears throat> like they, they they know what they're doing they're they're, mm -hmm. they're covering their steps um, well very we do well later their... yeah we do later find out that they covered their steps enough in the past to never be found out and to possibly be trying to cover it up still so they do have something on yeah on everybody else they are a step or two ahead of everybody else and I, and it's stuff like that that definitely helps build the the oof, the dread aspect of it where you're just waiting for the next thing to happen which eventually does mm -hmm. i gotta say i didn't think i was gonna like katagiri as much because i didn't think we were gonna see her ever again until the yeah. end or something mm -hmm. I really like Katagiri. She is great. Um, the Ari, sorry, Ari now. Um, she's helping him because she gives this whole long storyline how her dad's like life fell apart because of his stolen chocolate and stuff. Uh, but it was more than that. His divorce, uh, his whole life changed and, and everything being branded yeah, it, as a thief, the possibility all of that. Of that all of that stemmed from a simple situation where like, you know, nobody believed the fact that he wouldn't 
that he didn't steal this chocolate bar. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah, to me, <laughs> I know it sounds so silly, but I'm just like, are we really calling the police over a chocolate bar? Yeah. Are we really so prideful that we can't apologize over a chocolate bar being found in our pocket? <laughs> but I, I get it's the principality. Yeah. It. And they said like, they did say that, that adults in it was a small town or something and it could be people talk and I like it, it is understandable. Like, I mean, it, it all makes sense within the story for sure. It's definitely not know, my reality. I, I, I know in me, if I was ever found in a store with stolen property on my person, I don't know. Like I, I, the, I didn't put that there. Like I'm yeah. <laughs> like, Oh dang. I thought I paid for that. Oh my yeah. bad. <laughs> it's just, it, it seems a little, it seems like, uh, I, I don't know. It's just it makes sense within the narrative itself, but I'm just and like it's fine. taking in the story, and it's just I'm I'm laughing about it. Yeah, it's it is an odd story for her to tell, but it is her life. That's what she grew up, with. and now whatever it was, it makes her believe in Satoru that much more, and believe that you would not do this, sure. especially because we just in her timeline, she just had that dinner with them, yeah. and she met, and she knew how they were together, and he was like. She was like, no, he would never do that. And she yeah. believes him. And that so belief, definitely multiple things. Yeah. And that belief is just so good because it's unwavering. It is, I will do this for you. And it could be naivety because she is younger, um, because she is still a high school student. But I like to believe it's that good in in people or good in humanity that it's like, yes, I will believe you because I think I know you and I have this blind faith in you because of these situ of this, you know, my situation and with how I've seen you with your mother and you would never do that. And I believe you and I trust you. And I love that. Uh, it's a uh, ra- totally random aside. I was watching a movie on not random, but I'll, I'll make a point of it. I was sure. watching on my return flight. I decided to watch a movie on the flight home. Watch the first Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, still holds up. Um, but <laughs> there's a point where, like, you know, uh, it's right near the middle, and like Jack says to Will something along the lines of like, "Have I ever given you a reason not to trust me?" And it's like, "Bro, yes, you yeah. have. Yeah. <laughs> like, you have given him many reasons not to trust you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, consistently. That's what this whole movie has been about <laughs> so far." But um, in this case, yeah, it's like one of those things where has he ever given her a reason that, like not to trust her? Like everything that he's ever, all their interactions have always just been like, you know, very casual, very nonchalant. But then, like you said, they have the, the dinner with his mom and everything. And it's there. there's obviously something awry. There's no reason for her to think that he would do something like that. However, you have the opposite side of the coin showcased with uh, the the works manager, who is just somebody who's going to blindly trust that the law and justice was going to happen and needs to be brought to the forefront. Whatever it is that's going through his mind that makes him several times try to put uh, Satoru directly in the line of fire until Adi finally, yeah, just <laughs> gives him a good fucking good shiner. Punch. Yeah, I think she laid it was, him out. <laughs> yeah, I think it was very interesting that they painted him as lawful good and the way they did it in some little frames. Because I remember specifically, like they spent time on his on his picture on his wall, which is like the Last Supper. If you know, it's like Christianity. And I, they literally showed that. And I, I thought the Last Supper, I wonder what that means. So, yes, please. It's definitely just I, I looked at it and I was like, why are they spending a couple of moments here while they're together, while they're having a good time? And it's to set up the way that he is, because he is this lawful good character that is has a moral compass. But in this situation, it is not good and is directed in the wrong way. But he thinks it's right. And he'll do while trying to be a good person to Satoru still and being like, hey, I'm still going to feed you. I'm still going to, you know, try and keep you good here and keep me good in your eyes. But I'm doing this other thing because I think this is the right way to do it with the law and stuff like that. So it was really interesting. They played it out so well in so little frames. And you're like, oh, this guy. Oh, no. What are you doing? And just the the juxtaposition between uh, Ari and the manager, and it was just really good. I really like the characterization of them, and I love that we came to the to the future again, which is really cool. Um, we gotta get going. Episode yep. six, Grim Reaper. Oh, yeah. What happens in episode six of Erased? 
Satoru saves Katagiri with the help of the manager at work. Oh. Satoru calling up Sachiko's old work friend who gives Satoru the resources to look into the history of the murder cases. Now equipped with the timeline of Hinazuki's death, as well as a list of potential culprits, Katagiri shares with Satoru that one of the city councilmen has been acting extremely shady even though the manager has been cooperative before the police arrive to arrest Satoru, him then noticing someone in the crowd having the same eyes that he saw the night his mother was murdered. Oh, man. Um, first off, Satoru going inside the house immediately just bolting in there. Not a Love this thought. dude. Love that we have a great, you know, main character. So, I, How do you feel about Satoru? Because I'm thinking, like, in my head, I just really like him as a main character. A lot of the times I love, you know, we've talked about it, where we love the side characters. Side characters become your favorite part of the show. And we have this dumb, whatever, expository reason for this main character to be talking. And it's like, ah, you don't have enough personality. I like all these other characters that you surround yourself with more. So Toru is becoming one of my favorite main characters. A lot of his little quirks about talking when he's trying to just think, but he speaks it. Him having the moral compass to be like, oh, you're you're 29. Fucking knock it off. Whatever. <laughs> and, pull and, yourself together. Yeah, pull yourself together. You're 29. Let's get it together. And him just running in there. How do you feel about Satoru right now? I definitely think he's a very likable protagonist. I like how since the show's beginning we can kind of see him changing over time as the like kind of becoming the uh the hero that he needs to be in mm -hmm. order to make this situation have the best outcomes possible because it's he's very much in a uh un like you know unfavorable situation he's not yeah. put in the the driver's seat the whole time it's almost as if the in a lot of ways the narrative happens to him and then he has to do something in response and then it's just more the narrative happens to him because there's this this presence that's constantly lurking and even in some of the shots some of the shots the wide shots where it just shows him like running across and then it cuts mm -hmm. away to the next thing i'm like is that supposed to be him just being watched like what's going on with some of uh, like the the you know some of the cinematography the cinematography um so uh i i think he's a very likable protagonist to see overcome these situations that are being presented to him because it's stuff that could you know cause a person to break very easily for sure and and we see him have those moments of like recollection and contemplation where he doesn't even realize like he started to cry he's like tears are rolling down his face and he doesn't even like realize why he doesn't even and because um, he has no time realize it yeah there's no time <laughs> to think and um so yeah that's uh, i think that's what uh makes him so likable is that he acknowledges the he as time goes forward he acknowledges the fact that time is running out mm -hmm. uh literally and we see him have more of a sense of urgency in like everything that he's doing more uh more care and attention to detail in everything that he's doing and he's just somebody that you want to see come out on the other side after yeah. all this shit man like i just <laughs> I, I want like i want that happy ending for him but it's just the show is giving that it's not either one i don't know but <laughs> i don't uh, know you, you did mention those moments where he has and it does happen usually when he sees his mom again and he's just crying and it just it just gives you those emotions with him like we're along with the ride we haven't had yeah. any times to stop and it's just a pause and it's like here we are it doesn't have to be like you know this whole breakaway of like, uh, oh my God, I, I just, I love everybody so much. I, I'm, I'm like a, I'm, I'm forgetting the word for it, but we never see him really reach that point of fully like expressing his feelings and emotions mm -hmm. entirely. I feel like the show does a way better job of just showing his actions and mm -hmm. his actions speak for like, he doesn't say I love my mom. He sees his mom after being in a timeline where she was killed and he sees her again and he just starts crying without realizing it. And you don't have to be told, oh, this character loves his mom. Like you yeah. get that. 
And that happens with a lot of the uh, other characters too. It starts to happen more with like Hinazuki as well. Uh, but uh, we'll get there when we get there. But sure. yeah, on Satoru being like a protagonist, I definitely think that's one of the things that's keeping me drawn into the show so much is just wanting to see something good happen to him. <laughs> We get the introduction of this new character, Sawada, who's the one that was co-workers with, with his mother. We get a lot of exposition about what's going on. The culprit frames people. Um, he's framed Hinazaki's murder in the past. Uh, and he gives a culprit list of who could it possibly be. And there's a lot of names on there, names that we haven't heard of before. Um but it is very interesting. I think this is the moment that you were talking about, right? Where it's yes. like, this is just a lot of exposition. Yeah. New character. Okay, here's the info dump. Here's <laughs> here's the stuff that I've been working on. With, the, and let me share with you. withholding of information that's been happening to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Bubsy. Uh, oh. And that is what got me, for sure. It was um, weird the way they did it, right? Because they just he just started talking and we're like, oh, shit. Okay, here we are. Gave us a lot of information, and it, I think it is just a device to get us to that next stage. Yeah, yeah. And like it, I, it was needed. I, I acknowledge that it was like, you know, there's a like if we're going to want to see him succeed, if he's going to go back in the past again, he can't go back under the same like context. We need to change what's going on. Otherwise, there's no reason to like bring him back to the present, so to yeah. speak. So we've got to have some developments in the present in order for the like, context of the story to kind of work from where it's going. But again, I just my point uh, last week was that I really thought this was just going to be like a long form. I'm going back to the past to fix something. And it's just that he's stuck until all the things are fixed. And I thought that's mm -hmm. what it was going for. I don't know like if that and, would have been as anxiety inducing and as uh like you know have as much of a sense of urgency because i think be, this whole part uh, of sending him back to the present really kind of like reignites that light under him mm -hmm. to remind him that like you know the the way you did things before wasn't good enough so we're going to give him some tools to read double down on his like sense of urgency because we find out that things can change in the future that things did change that first time that he did it it just wasn't enough and we find out that he can possibly will this thing to happen because as he's getting arrested and as he sees the guy that he passed going down the stairs he sort of i don't know what do you think it was was it like uh his emotions ran high or like how do you how would you justify this happening where he's like i gotta go back this is I not don't the way no like it, it's it's i think it might be the fact that it's always it always happens so he can go back to prevent a disaster from happening and the first time he went back uh it was to prevent you know the whole disaster of his mother being killed he was discovered and stuff whatever he did wasn't good enough so he got sent back to the present where things were kind of uh in turmoil but not like that that first one he he already failed it so until then another disaster happens he's stuck in the present and i think the disaster was you know oh he's gonna he's actually getting arrested now he's in handcuffs and he's being mm -hmm. taken away so now he has to go back and change it and i think that's why he acknowledges like this is my last chance like mm -hmm. i'm not like i'm in present i'm in cuffs and if i do not change things right now and right here i will go back to the present and i will be taken away in those cuffs and if they did that if they do it more times then i think it would have you know have diminishing returns i like that he did it once he did state this is the last time this is all i got here we are we got to go balls to the wall i got to make some big changes here and i like that because again it adds like you said it adds to the urgency it adds to what's going on it adds to the story and especially because we saw the guy there and yeah. i really did but now love... we know that like not only was the guy that murdered his mom like just uh like in the force right there with the police what like i'm pretty sure that's supposed to imply like he's uh in 
the system, you know. Well, I wasn't there people around as well. Uh, like I guess, I watching? guess, yeah. He's just a he looks like a bystander. Never mind. Yeah, but because I thought there was a couple like, yeah. other people. But the whole time, like he's right there. He's just right there, just watching, watching, yeah, seeing what he did. Like this is what he's doing, and he wants to see it. And he's happen. that close to it happening. Yeah, it's so is, menacing. It's yeah, so it's crazy. Very menacing. Um, I do like the hero statements, and I think we get one when he's in the past as well to uh, Kenya. But I love his like hero statement uh, to Katagiri, how he's like, "What's the perfect thing to say? What would I say here in a perfect world?" Like and like, I like that he is doing that kind of stuff because like. It shows his true self. I mean, him running yeah. in for her, like, you have no time to think, and this was your action. Like, that shows that you're a good person. That's courage. That's everything that a hero should be. When you don't yeah. think about it, what is your instant reaction? And he exemplifies that quite a few times in the show so far. So I'm, like, really enjoying his character development or us, you know, taking a peek into who he is, um, which is really dope. Episode 7, Out of Control. What happens in episode seven? Satoru gets another revival, sending him back to right before the shared birthday party with Hinazuki. Then doubling down on his efforts, he decides he will leave no regrets this time. Kenya directly asks Satoru who he is, as he seems to be displaying another personality within him. Satoru decides he can trust Kenya, who seems to be genuinely worried about him and Hinazuki. Satoru gives Yuki an alibi, then asking Hinazuki if she is willing to run away. Satoru and Kenya set up Hinazuki in an abandoned bus where she acknowledges that everything is happening, uh, that everything that is happening is all she's ever wanted. However, it seems that someone is aware that Hinazuki is taking ref refuge on the bus. Oh, man. I, now... I yelled at the TV when this shot, that, that last shot. I was just like, are you kidding me? I was just oh my God. Very, very upset. I, yeah, for sure. I, in this episode, it was great. I loved this episode uh, for a few different moments because one, he goes back in time. We're not playing games here. We have to make some big changes. And we see that he thinks about what's going on. He's like, okay, here are the characters. Here are the little you know, chess pieces. How do I make sure that this doesn't happen again? He gets uh, Yuki and he's like, okay, let me give him an alibi. Let's get the police over there. So they know he's here because they uh, he got planted some CP uh, in his room. And it's like, oh yeah, he's the guy because he had this, but it was planted by the, the real killer abductor. Um, the cool part, not the cool part, but the crazy part. Um, well, one, I mentioned the Kenya, you know, confrontation where he was like, he says, "What is?" he's like, I'm just trying to be a superhero. And then Kenya's like, you already are a superhero, man. Let's just do it together. I love that. Love that. So good. But also, I'm when he's... sorry for doubting you, Kenya. Yeah, I sorry. <laughs> well, hold on. I know. I yeah, I know. I still, still got some. I'm yeah. like this. I'm like, yeah, Kenya just like. It's a side eye. It's a mm. side eye. It's the Ray. He's got the, it's the Ray in him. It's He's got the Ray vibes for sure from Promised Neverland. But yeah. another moment I really liked is that he was willing to go all the way to kill her mom. To push her down the stairs and i love that they did a close-up on his face and he had and red he eyes. had red eyes he had the reddest i'm like wait uh this show is so good because again the mystery is just like we don't know who it is we don't know what's going on who's a bad it. guy who's good who there's nobody completely moral center really in the context of the story but like now i'm like is satoru the one did satoru kill his mom uh, everybody's in everybody's in suspects right now it's i'm like literally I, the I, meme I, of the guy <laughs> holding the gun to his own back yeah it's like <laughs> why did you do this like i'm literally like about to, i'm like about to connect the red yarn to his name because i was like what are you doing <laughs> he had the red eyes and i was like came back full circle yeah i was like hold on it was you because oh. that was beautiful i love that they added the red i was like you know they know what they're doing they do they yeah, know what they're doing because everybody Everybody, when they had like a bad thought or like you thought they were the culprit, they had red eyes. And then Totoro in that moment had it. Whoo, so the good. Eyes of a so killer. Much. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's changing the past, or at least trying to. Uh, they make the hideout in the bus, abducted, abducted her onto the bus. And then at the end, a man enters the bus. And how tense was that? That I was, was so I was so upset. 
I was just Wait, like, why were you upset? Just, why were you yelling? <laughs> I I thought that like you know I, I was like are you, like she's gonna get killed. Like I thought yeah. he was aware, like you know that she's there and that's what he was there for. Oh okay. okay. I I thought they had just you know uh, at one point when they're pulling up to the bus, it shows that like th- there's just clear tracks in the snow leading up to it. Yeah. <laughs> There was just too much that made me think that like it was just going to be all bad. I'm glad it wasn't, but oh my goodness. I was like, we just came back to the past and we just got this whole thing about him being a superhero and him not making any mistakes and yada, yada, yada. And the narrative is going to like send us that direction. So, something that, that was mentioned early on that never was mentioned before was that these kids did have a hideout already. And I don't know if I missed it or not, but they, they, I remember the first couple episodes, they're like, we promised to never go back to the hideout until the snow went away or something. Why didn't they use that hideout? And like, There's still is snow. that okay? Well, if, the, if, if they said it was because <laughs> we're not going back till the snow's gone, yeah, then yeah, it's because, uh, the snow. Okay. I didn't think, I didn't know if the bus was their hideout, but because he did explain like it was this school's something it, or the other school and... just got a new bus so that bus yeah. is just kind of hanging out yeah okay i didn't know if it was if i missed it where they were like this is the hideout we were talking about in the first couple of episodes so i, I don't, don't think so okay definitely um but now we have her abducted and it kind of kicks off here and this episode eight is really interesting um how do you feel? I know we gave our like sort of a, a side eyes to Kenya, but Kenya's on Kenya's on Satoru's side, as far as we know. I mean, he's helping them to just figure it out. He doesn't ask questions. He's like, I get it, and he's always been the smarter one. And he's like, Yeah, let's do it. Let me. I found this hideout. I have this place. Let's keep her there, and let's just you know deal with it. And and even Satoru is like, I'll take the blame for it all if anything comes to it. But how do you feel about uh, Kenya as a character? Because we had never really talked about him. Uh, I I did mention him. Like the the most I've mentioned about him is just the Ray vibes, I guess. Yeah. But it's, it's just like in this in the first four episodes when you see him in those asides with the uh, the, the teacher class teacher, it just has yeah like a, a menacing ish vibe, and the again the the teacher just still doesn't exactly sit right with me like i just i it's like you said the the it's it continues to be like i don't know who did it the show continues to drive that uncertainty factor through the roof while at the same time feeling like it's still providing a good mystery that's uh keeping you involved as the story progresses Mm -hmm. kenya in these four episodes i feel like just are three uh, that he's mostly involved in take he uh take him to a point where like he's just he seems like a good reliable friend that just wants to help but because he he <sighs> showcased that he's smarter than the rest yeah like he's the one that noticed that satoru was acting different i mean yuki did kind of he just said oh you are you're you've grown up you're really quick. being more mature yeah yeah but... you're being more mature but kenya was like you have two the... people inside of you yeah he set <laughs> the plan you, he was like yo wolves. Remember that book <laughs> inside of you there too. <laughs> he's like, yo, remember that book I lent you uh, a couple days ago? Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 I forgot. And then he's like, I caught this motherfucker. I got him. I got him right here. What's going on? So he is definitely smarter than the rest, which, again, throws up the red flags. But I definitely want to talk about our predictions at the end of like what. Uh, but I just want to get your general vibes about. Uh, I didn't uh, even catch that myself, to be honest. I yeah. thought he was just trying to like. I thought it was just trying to be like a subtle symbolic thing that uh, I never uh, looked up the name. book. I yeah. did look it up and the, it's oh. a fake book. There's no, there's oh. no book that pose like that. Yeah. the switched man. Yeah. The switched man. So like that was making me think, you know, a reference to him switching from present and uh, uh, past. And then it's like, Oh, it doesn't even exist. <laughs> I thought he so. knew even further that he was coming. I thought he was going to ask, are you from the future <laughs> or something? I thought he was going to like straight up just ask that. Like somehow he figured it out. But, uh, but it was it was a step below that. I thought it was just uh, I thought exactly. I, sh- I noticed that, and I guess that's all I thought it was that the switched man was supposed to be kind of like a thing that uh, he was saying that he's doing. He's like switching between like two different personalities. The switched mm-hmm. man uh, saying that's that's what Satoru is. But <laughs> I don't know if it's me and my, somebody was like, "Hey, remember that thing I lent you?" Like blah 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 yeah. blah. 
I'm definitely the person to be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. yeah. <laughs> like, Remember when we had that conversation about that one thing? It was like, yeah. 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 yeah dude, for sure. <laughs> you so can tell me something happened, dude. If it's a few days ago, I don't even remember what I happened for breakfast <laughs> or what I had for breakfast. <laughs> um or what happened for breakfast i guess yeah and Anyways. you would you want to wouldn't want to wouldn't want to be confrontational and you just yeah, be like exactly yeah. exactly like yeah. it is my friend and they're just you know asking me about this thing so yeah. they're just um, yapping <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even catch that though that's definitely what he was pulling he was like he caught him red-handed with that mm -hmm. thing now i don't even feel as smart as a fifth grader Sheesh. yeah as far as <laughs> um episode eight spiral what happened in episode eight of erased whoever stepped onto the bus leaves without approaching hinazuki seeming to not know that she was there satoru continues to visit her hiding this from his mother the class teacher along with child protective services do a visit on hinazuki's house but her mother and her boyfriend are both missing Hinazuki gives Satoru the mitts that she promised to finish him, then realizing that they are still stuck inside the murder loop. Enacting Plan B, Satoru reveals to his mom that Hinazuki has been accompanying them while the school has been whipped into fuss over her being missing. Sachiko informs the class teacher that Hinazuki is safe. He then asks a favor out of her uh, off camera. Sachiko dotes on Hinazuki for the night before they go back to Hinazuki's house confronting her mother. Oh my god. I love this episode. This is probably my favorite episode. This is um, the best episode so far. This is sure. so good. So mm -hmm. we gotta go in order here. So um the guy leaves, nothing really happens, and he dumps he out his just... backpack. How yeah, he dumps out his or backpack. Or he leaves his backpack, sorry. Leaves his backpack. It has all the abduction stuff. I guess we could talk about that because i want to talk about the mom but he leaves all his stuff um there in the bus and then they realize that oh it's still happening this was all the stuff that they said happened or at that uh they info dumped on us on what actually happened to our body it was uh the mom and the boyfriend or husband i guess boyfriend i don't know they beat her up um and threw her into the shed and then it uh somebody took her out or yeah took her out did something then put her back in to freeze her to spray this stuff to make her freeze faster and then the body was back by the morning the uh even i'm not like completely sure what's no yeah that's, that's that's all right I'm and then sure. that's what happened and then yeah. the parent or the mom got her out or something and then found out that she was dead uh i guess that was a series of events but um all that stuff that was used whenever they explained that situation was all there in his backpack and he's still in the timeline of what's actually happening it just kind of missed them for one day or so so it, it they think that it still will eventually happen there's so many moving parts here because we also get uh, the teacher doing some investigating of the mom's place bro i okay we'll talk about it at the end i think i want to i want to save it for the end but the teacher doing this stuff really interesting that's another moving part mm -hmm. and then we have the the more fun stuff man and the stuff that i really like because i want to put his mom on this here and i, don't think, <laughs> I think because i think we've we've settled on that <laughs> because man like she's just doing mom things like you put in this thing just mom things she knows she knows what her son is doing of course being a mom she's like i know what you're doing but i'm gonna let you do it and think that you're doing it by yourself but here let me tell her that i know and mm -hmm. I packed this, not for him, but I knew that he was coming to see you. So this is for you. Here you go. The fun stuff with them at the house, bro. Although, uh, I don't know. Them them taking a bath together, a little weird. A little, but fine. That teetered. That teetered where I was like, that teetered. Mm. but they were having fun. But like, I kind of get it because she, she never she, had a She mom. asked and stuff. It wasn't like, I don't know. You know, yeah. I don't but know. It, it is understandable just because she's a mom. She's never had that feeling of, and, and, you know, she's never had that feeling of being a mom or uh, having a mom that mm -hmm. cared for her and washed her probably. And to us, exactly. And that's, that's exactly the, what we get when she steps out the next morning, seeing like breakfast made for her and just starts breaking down, thinking mm -hmm. about the most she ever got left at her actual home was a cup of noodle, a piece of dry bread and mm -hmm. two quarters and then she cries and it's just like oh i'm there i'm there for you i want you to stay alive that's what you i know? mean man i hate watching this show 
I just this show is like if I didn't start watching this show, I wouldn't have to want this character to be alive at the end. Yeah. Of it. But now I started watching it, and now I want this character to be alive. And if the show doesn't give me that, I might flip out. <laughs> <laughs> I might go kill some. <laughs> um. Also, uh, yeah, all the fun stuff, all this silliness, all all the little. Oh, I said it out loud. Do you want? It's like she was like, uh, "Am I in the middle of something?" He's like, "Yeah." <laughs> it's like so good. It's so silly. It gives a this episode gives, it gives a nice the reprieve. perfect amount of levity and relief in some a show that's very bleak and has very heavy subject matter, mm-hmm. especially when you get you know breakaway bits of. It's showcasing using a mannequin as a stand in how like somebody's timeline of murder is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like that part is just super chilling. Yeah. On its own. <laughs> mm-hmm. so and I think they I'm made glad it... that we get the moments of levity, the moments of humanity mm-hmm. shining through all of the wickedness that happens in the show. Yeah. Because it... of whoever our unseen, unheard of culprit is still lurking about. Oh my goodness. It's it's intense. I felt I feel the anxiety. I have so many tense feelings. Um the police were supposed to come by today to uh her mom's house. Her mother's absent at work. Uh the mom left, the teacher's there. Uh you know, just all these little instances of passing like oh man, like tense, like oh is it going to happen now? How is it going to end? Whatever all the stuff. We're still in the murder loop. Uh, the killer, maybe the one like using the bus as well, or two, two uh, ships passing in the night. Yeah, <laughs> literally, <laughs> pretty much. Also with the killer because the killer's out there and he was at the bus, and and also I was thinking about this. Do you think the mom had any say in what happened? Like, how do you think the mom plays into this? Because somebody took out the body and brought it back. Um, do you think the mom hired somebody or do you think somebody came to the mom and said, Hey, here's money and let me kill your daughter. Or do you think she wanted her daughter dead because she hates her really? Like, what do you I think, think I, her mom like motive or what do you think the mom had to play with it? That's what yeah. What, what yeah. is, what's her, I don't think she had anything to play with her actual murder. I think that she's definitely an abusive physically sure. and emotionally abusive mother that, doesn't deserve her child um but i don't think that uh given everything that i've seen up to this point i don't think that she's involved with her actual murder i think that she just she gave somebody the perfect opportunity to swoop in and permit um because they were able to be clued in on oh this girl that's always alone at the park at night this girl that has an abusive mother, this girl that there's some uh, young adult that's constantly talking to her. This is the perfect victim. Okay. So to speak. At yeah, least that's I, what the show has pr- presented to me so far. That's what I think is kind of going on with that sure. dynamic. <clears throat> it I, might come out of left field and be like, maybe the teacher and the mother were always in cahoots or something like that. And the teacher yeah. only doing things because he knows Satoru is a, uh, Trying to fuck it up. So yeah, being so like vocal and physically insertive um, of the situation, where like yeah, I just I don't fully trust the teacher. I do not fully trust him. (laughs) I everybody is still a suspect. Everybody's still a culprit. Nobody has clean hands, so to speak. Even just like the whole he has that short black hair. He's a young, um, tall male. He like put a hat on him and have him tip that hat down and he could be the same person that was standing there looking at Satoru sure. when he was getting handcuffed. Like, I am not sold that that's not the murder. And it could also be the fact, you know, everybody plays a different part in it. Maybe, like, I, I... It could be, you know, the, the web is much bigger than a single spider. Well, that would suck. That would suck. But <laughs> that it's would like, be the worst. Be one of those things where, oh, all right, then there's season two. <laughs> I, yeah, I still don't... I mean, I I hear what you're saying. I think there is some percentage that maybe the mother was, you know, offered some amount of money or offered, you know, something to get rid of her kid because she hates her 
or she has this hate that is directed at her and yeah. she thinks that she's the reason why all this hate is here and she took the easy way out so i think there's still a percentage that the mom has some sort of play in it i think um that i'm not letting go of um definitely um one second so i gotta get that out of there um, um so yes. at the end they confront her mother and it is the mom it is taru it, it's it's the crew and we're like okay oh, shit. Pull up. here we are and the episode ends so that is going to be a great place to come back to oh, yeah. on the next episode and i do want to talk about where i want to talk percentages like what we don't know who it is we don't know what's going on I want to know where you're at with percentages wise on who's done it. Who's the one that's behind it. And, you know, thinking about the different characters, who's suspect number one for you right now. Suspect number one right now. Hmm. Hmm. Cause we have a few, we have a lot of people that we've sort of met people that have given information. Like You've a already big mentioned part a couple. of me just keeps saying that it's like, it's the teacher and it's, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, starts with a K. Kenya, uh, Kenya, that are just somehow there in some sort of cahoots to where they would benefit from the things that uh, negative things happening to Hinazuki. Uh, especially like I don't know the fact that Kenya was like I always noticed her like cuts and bruises and stuff, and I just kind of looked the other way. Like I'm just like, bro, come on. The teacher, the whole. I, I talked about in the last episode a lot of the framing of him in certain shots, uh, a lot of the the motivations behind his actions and why he would feel it's okay to like confide so much in Satoru, who's just a fifth grader. Like, there's just such a air of uncertainty about the teacher that I think that he's probably my number one suspect. Sure, but uh, the, like you said, there's the mom and the boyfriend are just also uh. because we only also saw have, the boyfriend once. Yeah. But then you also have, uh, he, not Hinazuki, uh, Katagiri in the present day telling him that it's this other person. Uh, uh, Nishi, yeah. Nishi Zono. Nishi Zono. Nishi Zono. Who may be suspect number one, who we don't know his name or yeah. we haven't heard the name in the past. So and the name that name also wasn't on like the suspect list that Satoru has now. But it's oh. like now if Nishi Zono, if nothing else happens with that character from this point out, that's gonna be our Chekhov's gun. Mm -hmm. But so something has to happen with that from this point. Otherwise, it serves the narrative no purpose. Or it's just an alternate name that we don't know about a character we already have met. If if that's the case, then sure. Because but we it, haven't heard something else happening with the name for sure. Yeah, we haven't like, heard the teacher's reveal. name, right? We don't know the teacher's first name. Um, Kenya could be a nickname. I don't know. Uh, Kenya could be his his last name, or or you know, Nishizono could be his title yes. name. Um, Kaylin saying, I'm thinking the teacher, it has to be someone Satoru's mom recognizes for sure, because the whole instance of it is that she sees the person she thinks she knows who it is and she tries to make the call but they get her first <sighs> but i think she says she knows immediately let me play it out for you here because I, you're saying teacher i really i'm like ari right now i really want to believe that this is a good human that this human is actually doing it for the right reasons, that he's just a good teacher. He wants the well-being for his students because he goes and checks it out. He doesn't care. He goes in and he's, to some, I guess, maybe, it looks like he's putting on a show for these other two people, possibly. Or that he already knew she wouldn't be there. And he's, oh, fuck. Yeah, hold on. He Maybe he already knew she wouldn't be there <laughs> and just kind of does that. Oh, shit. Uh, but I, I want to believe I want to believe that this is a good human, that this is a good teacher, but I also really, 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 suspect number one for me is Kenya. The way to throw us and the, the best possible narrative, we talk about this in wrestling a lot, where it's like, if you know, like, for the best possible show and the best possible narrative, which I know you want, 
this is who has to be the champion. This is who has to win. This is the setup. For it to be a completely heart-wrenching, intense story, it has to be Kenya. And I want it to be Kenya, yeah. but then I don't. Yeah. Because of how close he is, uh, because he's sort of shifty a little bit. I don't know how he does it, but it's also somebody that his mom sees and of course she would know his face and of course she would be like oh what i should have believed him and i really think it's gonna be kenya uh caitlin said if it's kenya yeah, then i don't understand the bus scene that's the thing that's what makes me say the web could be bigger than a single spider that's what makes me say that is because i want kenya is one of those prime suspects but if kenya is a suspect somebody else is in cahoots with Ken uh, kenya if because kenya there's stuff then... happening in this timeline yeah that kenya couldn't be responsible for but in the future that could be kenya that could be the guy in the future and then it's like oh what if th there was like uh his the person that he was in cahoots with and kenya are both like they're they're in sync synchronous with each other mm -hmm. in the present day and that's how they're able to continue to pull things off framing other people is because everybody thinks it's a guy but it's actually some guys mm -hmm. more than i think one. that's going to be like the episode nine or episode maybe uh 10 episode 10 or episode 11 reveal that like oh my kenya's here and he knows something that he shouldn't that means he's responsible but there's still somebody else yeah that's my that's my that's what I'm calling out. Oh man. I don't know. And then who would it obviously be? The person that we've seen him as having a sides with the whole time is <laughs> the Kenya, teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Kenya, Kenya and the teacher. There's only but so I, many characters. I also don't know why. Like, what's the point? What's the point of killing these girls? I mean, they never said I don't want to eh. they never said nothing happened beforehand. Yeah. Um, so what's the motive to the actual like abduction and killings of them? Psychopaths? Yeah, I mean, to be able to, yeah, I mean, yes, for sure. But like, especially when you're doing things like spraying somebody down to have them freeze faster, like, but that's like just is something it... that somebody crazy, crazy wants to do to somebody? Yeah, that, that's why I want to because I haven't seen that crazy in anybody. There, there was like a fat a flash of Yuki whenever he mentioned uh, in the room. Satoru mentioned Hinazaki being like, "Oh, she's hanging out, he hanging around with us now," and he was like, uh, and he was he was giving me like a little bit a little bit of weird vibes, but then she... it came out to be a red herring. Yeah, well, he got nervous because he was like, hey, have you seen her? Oh. And he was like, no. Like, And he starts like looking around like, why? Why? Yeah. And, and then he was like, oh, she's been hanging around with us. And then he's like, oh, that's the best possible outcome. And to yeah. me, that was him. That was him like being worried for her well-being. Sure. Being somebody that probably knows about her abuse. Like. True, because he is older. He probably noticed. Yeah. I, I can only assume that. So I, that's what I was taking it with the show because the whole case of, you know, Satoru knowing that it saying deep down that it wasn't Yuki also connects back to everything else. Having somebody that believes in you and Satoru believes in Yuki. So like that, and, uh, that I don't think it could be Yuki. And that's I like, believe if, in if the mom. It turns out that like Yuki was the person the whole time. I'll hate this show. I'll yeah. say that right on the sure. right on the front. <laughs> Cuz like what was the point of all What of was the then? point of the show? <laughs> well, we don't know, but by this time next week we will know and by this time next week we will have rated this anime on our scale for season 2 S through F and you can join in. I'll be posting a link in the description of this video and of when it releases tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get it out tomorrow, but wherever you're watching this there should be a link. <laughs> Uh, two polls let's do a poll for the rating and let's do a poll for who do you think did it yeah <laughs> if it's your first uh, time watching <laughs> um so wherever you're watching this right now if you're watching this on replay or somewhere else on youtube or on spotify there will be a link there for the next episode because you can rate the show along with us we rate it on three different uh categories you can rate them as well and your vote counts your votes matter into the actual you know landscape of where it actually lands on the poll or on the the ratings here for the anime for the season two and then we're gonna pick a brand new anime next week so be here next Ooh. week or the show i think we're gonna do this one on wednesday 
Uh, we're going to be go back to the regular schedule on Wednesday. Matt, when you are not um, in States of the North, where can they find you? Uh, when I'm not here, you used to be able to find me on my Twitch, but I'm getting my YouTube account what? ready to start streaming over on YouTube. Whoa. So if you want to follow me on that, you can follow me on YouTube at Matt underscore Galley. Whoa. Uh, my socials are still the same at ITS Matt underscore Galley, ITS at the front. When we're not here talking about time travel and butterfly effects, where can the people find you? Um, you can find me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Jules the Human. Uh, I stream on YouTube, and if you're watching this on Twitch or watching this anywhere else, go hit that subscribe on youtube.com slash Jules the Human. I post uh, regular videos on here on this channel, and I go live and playing Overwatch again. Helldivers tomorrow, if you're watching this live, playing some Helldivers in the morning, if you want to come play, but I've been going through Nier Automata. We have memberships, the same as Twitch, but you can also find this podcast here on my YouTube channel, and you can find it on Spotify. Just look up the Jules and Matt Anime Hour on my YouTube channel. I have a playlist. It's a podcast playlist. It'll have all of our episodes from the past, but on Spotify as well, you can watch the videos. So if you're just uh, wanting to watch on a different platform, you can listen and watch on Spotify. That's where you can find the podcast, and um, yeah. Yeah, that's been it. And next week, we're going to end Erased episode 9 through 12. We're going to finish it. We're going to rate it. We're going to talk about it. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We'd love for you to watch. Watch those episodes along with us. Episode 9 through 12 of Erased. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.